Hello, my name is Christopher Maldeson and I work as Field Application Engineer at Know-How Solutions. In this video I'm going to show you how to work with memory and registers in Trace32. There are different types of register in, in the CPU and the first one I'm going to show you is the general purpose registers. You find these in the CPU menu under CPU registers or you can see open it from also the view menu and under registers or from the command line by just typing in the command register or just short R. So that was three different ways to open this window. This window show, as I said, the general purpose register of the CPU. So in my case, I'm debugging an ARM CPU. So that means that we will have general purpose register 0 to 15. But general purpose register 15 is normally called a program counter or PC. There are also some other registers, control registers and some status bits shown in this window. So if I just start up single step in my code, you will see that the content of this register are changing. If you would like to more easily see the changes, you can add the spotlight command to this, or the spotlight option to this command. I do that by just right clicking on the top of the window and the command will be copied down to the command line and I can add the spotlight option like this. And now if I single step, you will see that the changes are displayed in red. If you like to modify the content of a certain register, you can do that by right-clicking on it and change using the modify or the set command. If I use the modify, you will see the actual command in the command line. So the command is register.set or just r.s. That is how you modify a CPU register. I'm not going to do that right now because it might destroy my program execution. In this video, you can also look at stack. It's not expanded by default, but you can click on the stack button like this, and that will show you the contents of in memory. So this is the stack, and you see the stack pointer here. Uh, in the ARM CPU, you also have a frame pointer, and you can switch to looking where the frame pointer is pointing also, if you would like to do that by using this small button. In many CPUs nowadays, you also have a floating point unit, and then normally you have some floating point registers. So if you'd like to look at them, you can do that in a similar way. You find it in the CPU menu and under FPU registers. So here you have all the FPU registers that are available in my Cortex-M device. As you can see, there are 16, 16, 64-bit register or, or double precision registers they can also be used as 32 32 bits or single position registers there are also other types of register in the cpu these are could be called the peripheral registers or or something like that and these are normally memory mapped so they you can access access them by using a, an address and to make it a little bit easier for the, the developers when you are developing some low-level drivers and, or set, etc., you, you will have a menu with the same name as your CPU. So in my case, I'm debugging an SDM32 F400 device, so I have the corresponding menu. And this will show you all the peripheral units and the corresponding registers that are available in this CPU. As you can see here, there are a lot of them, so I can select, for example, the ADC converter and ADC3. So here you see the register in the ADC controller. So the first one is the ADC underscore SR register. So if I click on the register value here, down below to the left you see the actual address where it's located in memory and also the full name ADC status register 
as you can see there are also bit fields here so this one should cor correlate with the reference manual of the CPU so for example here you have some bit field called regular channel end of conversion which is bit 1 in this register and this one will mostly be bit 0 you can also modify the value of a register but the first one is a status register so that's most likely a read only register but the second one is ADC control register so here you can most likely modify the content of this register you can do it by just a single bit field by right clicking on bit field and select in this case enable to enable the this one and as you can see the 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 content of the register is changing when I'm doing this you can of course also change the complete register by either double click or right click on the register and select for example modify then you will have the command to modify this register in the command line okay as I mentioned in the register window if you like to have the changes highlighted you can also uh, do that here in this window you will use the spotlight option so again I'm right clicking on top of the window and then I'm adding spotlight like this and if I just start execution and as you can see now the changes are highlighted in red as you can see the value in this register are not updated while we're running if you want it to happen for this window you can right click on top of the window again and add another option called dual port like this and then if I start execution you will see now for example the ADC data register will actually see the converted value is updated while we are running okay so all of these registers as I said are memory mapped as you can see the address down there if you will want to see this window by just looking in the memory you can use the data.dump command I will do that from the command line d.dump and then just type in the address like this and this should actually show you the exact same data but we don't have any information about the name of the register so for example here we see the status register and here ff that should correlate to this one etc so the data.dump command can be used to look at any memory location so and you and now I showed you how to use it from the command line but you can also use it from the menu in the view and dump like this. so here you can type in either an address like what I did in when I opened my dump window or a symbol a symbol then could be a function name or but most likely a variable name and you can use the if you don't want to type it in exactly correct you can use the symbol browser to locate it just start typing in the beginning of the function or variable name and then just double click on it if I push OK now you will see the same window but in this case we're looking at the address of the know-how matrix so this is where know-how matrix is located in memory so I will just run to part of the code where I'm actually doing some changes to this variable so if I start seeing a step in my code here you will see that the content here is updated and again 
if we like to have the, con the changes highlighted, you can add the spotlight option. Spotlight more or less works on any window showing any data from memory. And if I do, now the changes will be highlighted in red. Again, this window will not be updated during runtime, as you can see. The, the, the uh, top of the window, you see these slashes here that indicate that this window is not updated. But you can add E option. I've d discussed this in an earlier window when looking at variable. So this will work the same. If I check the E option, you will see now that this window is actually updated during runtime. There's one more thing I would like to show you when it comes to displaying memory. And that is if you have a buffer and you think that you have some kind of buffer overrun or something, it could be very, very useful to see what's located next to this buffer in memory. So I will locate my buffer. So browse and again, locate my variable. Uh, in this case, I'm using the know-how matrix again. This could be in the stack or something else. Doesn't matter, but I'm select. Oh, sorry. I'm right click on it and selecting display memory and view. So in this view, you will see you will see the address here, and you will see the variable name. But you can also just scroll in this window, and you will see actually the variables that are just next to this buffer in memory. So just on top of it, there is some called NSM here. And after this one, if we scroll down a little bit, you will see that we have something called numbitter just after this one. So this could be useful, for example, if you see that you, you're overwriting this buffer with some strange data. Then you could have a buffer overrun and then by just looking in this window, you could maybe figure out where or what other buffer that is overrun or something like that. So this was all that I want to show you when it comes to memory and registers. Thank you for watching.